Hello everybody. So in this video I would like to um, review the various versions of the mini spot welder out there and try to shed some light on the differences and the defects and clear some uh, questions that I'm often asked about uh, the modifications, the diode and the cap and etc etc. So Let's start by saying that uh, the mini spot welder, any version, is uh, in one way or the other kind of flawed. Um, the first version had the cap mod needed and the later versions, uh, these ones here, uh, need a resistor mod and a resistor added in to limit the inrush current and avoid the diode breakdown. So as you can see, these two have their own problems. I will speak about the details details later on the circuit, which one is, uh, you know, has some advantages with respect to the other, etc. Then there is this variant, which is called Wise Maple, and it's a four FET one. It looks similar, but the display is moved and it has only four FETs. And this one actually pretty much works out of the box, uh, though to be precise it would also need a little uh, inrush resistor uh, but the cap is much smaller so the current may be tolerable tolerable to the uh, diode uh, which um, I don't know what will happen on the long run I mean meaning powering it off and on again but okay uh, it should theoretically actually not theoretically but practically resist because in theory you would need an inrush current diode lim uh, resistor limiter here too so let me show you the uh, differences this is the wise maple as you can see it's aesthetically different you can recognize it because it actually has wise maple written on it and this is the other version uh, the first version let's say I can reduce it a little bit in size. Oh, okay, it's smaller enough. Okay, well, uh, the Wise Maple is a, a little bit smaller because it has four FETs. The display is on the right. It has a Wise Maple written on it, so this is pretty much, you know, evident. Instead, the first version or the second versions, the initial or the, um, let's say, a little bit later versions, uh, the aesthetics are, it, it's the same. The only thing maybe you can notice is maybe the color of the buttons here. Uh, white, the earliest version has uh, white buttons and then the BK, the BL, etc. have black buttons. But then again, there is also a version with white buttons. So that's, you know, if you see a white button, then it may be a first revision, but it can be a CA, which is a later revision. So that is also not definitive. So one Wise Maple, this is a, let's say, a parallel version which has a similar design. Uh, it works pretty well. It's limited to 30 milliseconds maximum. You cannot go higher with uh, the um, software here. It's limited to that to probably protect the FETs. To be honest, if you have a good battery, 10 to 15 milliseconds is um, enough. And this one goes up to way up to 99, so you can pretty much destroy your FETs or make a hole in the battery if you're not careful. Uh, so this is um, the two uh, basic versions uh, aesthetically now uh, back to the description so the first one and the second one look like this and the wise maple one looks like this okay this is currently the situation and I am not aware of any other versions aesthetically uh, as you can see three versions of the first and four versions maybe more of the second these two here are aesthetically the same and then this is the wise maple one has written wise maple so that should clear out the different versions and how can i know which one i'm getting well here you're sure because you know it's pretty aesthetically different if you're ordering one that has this picture you don't know you can't know so the only way to know is once you receive it Unscrew the top uh, faceplate here and then remove the MCU board and that's when you can take a look inside and understand which kind of um, version you have. So the revision zero or 
early boards look like this. It has the MCU, which is basically similar to all, the same to all the others, but it has this driver circuit, a diode here, and an optocoupler, and then a lot of resistors. So it's pretty different respect to this later versions, which, as you can see, have no more all that bunch of resistors. It only has a microcontroller, no driver, no optocoupler, and that's it. It has a manual trigger here and a display OLED uh, display connector here with its own power uh, the driver here the led driver that's all and uh, just to be complete this is the little board on the wise maple it just has the MCU uh, this is the reset um, pull up with the cap um, connected to you know the on NR and reset uh, pin which is this one and uh, the same OLED driver here and the connection with the uh, flat cable which I removed just to show you what's underneath. It has nothing else on board. This is a wise maple one. So as you can see it's, the board is much smaller. It only has a three buttons and that's it. So these are the three boards and, uh, the, and the three MCU boards. Now here we see the uh, main board of the uh, first version, the let's say the unmarked one with the white buttons, um, with the five FETs. As you can see here, take a look at under this uh, cap, there are, are no components. You see, no components, no diode, nothing. This cap is connect connected directly in parallel to the battery. Okay, keep that in mind, because we will discuss this later. It's one of the major differences between this and the other versions. And here is the top of the MCU board. Here instead, you have the main board, the main FET board, of the later versions, the BK11, the BL18, and so forth, the BL19, I'm sorry, and so forth. As you can see under this big same cap, there is a diode. As you can see, it's M7. Keep that in mind because this can change, but it doesn't really matter. You have... Um, these uh, diode with the two uh, voltage dividers here and this biasing uh, couple transistor couple here for the base and you have the driver circuit with the um, resistor drivers the resistor in series here the 30 ohm resistor and the pull down resistor here so this is the push pull one here one here and this is the driver that drives them uh, with the 30 ohm coming from the positive going down to the collector this is the collector this is the emitter this is a base collector emitter base. The two bases are connected together and they are connected to the collector of this one. This is a driver transistor. PN, PN, PN and uh, NPN here. Um, this pin, the, this um, trace here, this is the base. It's coming from pin 4, which comes from the MCU above. All this is only present on these later versions. If you check the prior version, as, you, as I just showed you before, it's completely clean. Okay. Um, this is the famous diode which doesn't have the inrush capacitor installed yet. Okay, this is a, photo, a picture from so somebody sent me this, and as you can see, uh, the um, inrush uh, resistor here has not been installed. So this is what you have to also do, and I will explain that. To, I mean, I explained that already. Uh, just put in series a resistor uh, 20 ohm which is average you can put with if you have this m7 diode you can put a 10 ohm if you want to stay on the safe side put a 20 ohm you can even go up to 50 it doesn't really matter if you have an m7 which is an equivalent to a 1n4007 uh, or you have a uh, shot key they uh, sold some versions i have one with an ss1 uh, which is a shot key uh, it doesn't really matter this is not really switching anything it's just acting as a normal diode What's important is that it uh, can handle at least one amp and it has that series resistor to keep it safe when you are powering this up directly with your battery and this big capacitor is charging up. Now, uh, as I said, the difference between the circuit of this layout and of uh, the other one which I showed, which is um, this one here, which has no components, it's substantial because the prior one, which I just showed here, has this diode with the components, and this one has no diode and nothing at all. This is a capacitor which is in parallel to this uh, power source with the battery. Okay, this is the battery terminals. So they put this here, big capacitor, low equivalent series resistance to help the weld. Okay, this one. 
this version. And in this version instead, because probably, I don't know, they found out that this uh, circuit board was dying when the voltage was dipping um, because of, you know, excess drop in voltage and this capacitor wasn't what enough, was, wasn't enough to keep the voltage up, then they started modifying it, they inserted this uh, diode here, but then this, uh, the capacitor is uh, way over overrated for uh, keeping the MCU uh, powered because you don't need such a large capacitor. We will get into this discussion a little bit later. So the important thing is that you have a clearer picture of the later boards and the initial board. The first versions uh, that are pretty much different, you know, they're pretty different in respect to these because on the MCU board, there, ha there is an optocoupler and a, a driver IC, an MCP driver. So what I wanted to do here is talk about these um, as quickly as possible. So at least we cover the issues here because um, there has been confusion about the cap, the recent inrush uh, current limit resistor. And I wanted to uh, discuss this and explain uh, what I think what happened and why this problem appeared. So. Um, let me check the circuits. This is um, the circuit of the one we know, the BK11. This is the main board, uh, the MCU board. And as you can see, the MCU board just has the MCU on it. The display, the connector here, the display is connected here. Uh, this is a transistor, this little transistor here drives the display uh, on off. Uh, you have the manual trigger, the buzzer, um, the reset uh, pull-up resistor and the cap and this uh, decoupling cap of the MCU and then you have your, this is the uh, voltage sense this tells the voltage of the battery to the uh, MCU you have the connector, pin 2 is not connected to anything pin 3, um, I'm sorry, the auto trigger sense uh, for triggers here uh, pin 4 is the output, the driver, the trigger, the driver, uh, this goes to the driver, and pin 5 is ground. Okay, so it's pretty pretty straightforward. Then you have the three push buttons here, which uh, control, you know, up, down, and auto manual, and whatever. Uh, this, is, this is all that's on that board. And that board is here. This is the front. Okay, it's written BL01, but it's the same BL01, BK18, uh, BL18, and BK11. This is the board on the front. It doesn't change, so you can see it. More interesting, the back. Okay, so this is the back of the board. The back of the board, as you can see, has those components which I talk about. Uh, the resistor divider here, which is a voltage sensor, one, two, three. This is the divider, and this goes to the pin here of the voltage sensor. And here we have the famous R4. It's not labeled on this board, as you can see. It's not labeled on all boards. The BL01 does not have that label. But if I go and check, uh, let's say, another version. Ah, okay, the CA04. As you can see, um, this board and... Check if I can swap them around. This board, one and two, they are identical. I'm swapping them quickly. I can put them one beside the other, so you can actually confront them. Okay. This one and this one. Let's move it and zoom in a bit. Oops. Okay. Okay. As you can see, R4 is this one, and it's labeled here. And the rest of the components are the same, the layout is the same. This is a different revision because it has, as you can see, the masking here, the um, ground area has been lift, uh, let's say it's a mesh, and here it's like filled. But it's, you know, it's identical. The layout is the same. <coughs> so, CA4, BL01, BL18, they're the same. The only thing that the CA04 has is a silk screen with R4. So 
for those of you who have this version, R4, when we're talking about R4, it's this resistor here, which has to be replaced with a 470 maximum 560 ohm resistor. Okay, this is to properly turn the frets on and off. The reason why uh, I will explain later. So if you're, you know, this this is the general this is the general mods. So we've seen all these. Okay, CA04, BL01, BL18. These basically all have the same motherboard, which is this one here. Uh, as you can see, this one has an M7 diode. Some have a SS diode, but it doesn't really matter. The problem with this, again, and we've spoken about this, is that this diode has no inrush current limiting resistor here in series and so when you connect it once twice three times you will short this diode out and this will then discharge when you weld and that's a problem so let's check again on the circuit okay basically yeah this is the bj07 i, I also um, made this uh, circuit on the layout, uh, just this part here is the same. What happens is the current goes through here and uh, it's very, the peak current is very high because this uh, resist, this uh, capacitor on uh, those boards is not 2200, but it's a 10,000 microfarad capacitor. So it's pretty large, it takes a lot of current to charge it without any resistor. And this diode fails. And so practically you're getting a short here, which is not good because then it's not doing its purpose. Now to the um, first revision, the first revision that appeared on the market. Um, this one is different, as I said, because the driver section is on the um, MCU board and it has the cap mod mod necessary because um, there is a flaw. And here is a layout. I don't have this version, but I have studied it um, and from the, let's say, the, the pictures, I'm fair, fairly confident about what I'm going to say. So, as you can see, this uh, version has uh, pretty many more uh, components on. Um, so, it is more expensive because this here, this is basically what changes the game a little bit. This is an MCP1407 uh, FET driver, okay, and uh, this driver is made to drive FETs. So this version has been, uh, I can say, probably engineered, studied a little bit better because, as you can see, you know there are a lot of all these resistors here are uh, they've been removed in the later versions, and the optocoupler has been removed. This is an optocoupler, the 357 here, and there is this uh, driver and the MCU. And um, uh, the voltage divider remains, the uh, trigger sensor and everything remains, the manual trigger also. So basically, there are one, two major uh, differences here, which are uh, the optocoupler and the MCV. The optocoupler is cheap, doesn't really make a big difference, but this, this does. And uh, to explain why and get in a little bit more depth, um, this board has the problem that you, this diode here, which is usually on, well, on the later version is on the main board, and in the beginning it was on the um, MCU board. The main board had a cap. It still has, and it's that big 10,000 microfarad cap. Now, to uh, clarify a little bit of confusion, that cap is, of course, also on the later versions, but there is a difference. The difference is that the diode is uh, has been moved down and that cap is kind of used instead of uh, in the aid of the weld okay instead of helping the weld it's used to help this circuit here the to keep this powered okay so let's see schematic wise what uh, the differences are between the initial version the rev zero and uh, you know first version with the uh, uh, only the cap on the main board and the later versions BL19, BK11 and etc etc. So here you see, uh, don't mind this regulator, uh, this is the BJ07 later version, just focus on 
the placement of this uh, diode and the cap so <clears throat> as you can see the later versions have from the positive battery coming in there is this uh, m7 diode or ss uh, it doesn't matter uh, it goes to the positive and then charges this cap which is actually a 10,000 microfarad capacitor in the case of those boards um, so keep this in mind and uh, then it goes to ground if you see and when you connect uh, 12 volt source as a big battery or lipo o3s lipo or whatever there will be a very strong inrush current which will damage and short out this diode because there is no you know current limiting uh, resistor because this capacitor is very large and it's practically a dead short as soon as you uh, connect a power source to it. All capacitors are initially a dead short however uh, this is in the let's say theoretical perfect world. Uh, naturally in the real world we have resistive losses we have inefficiencies so smaller capacitors uh, when you just power them directly even with a diode in series if this diode is big enough it can hand that very fast transient of high peak current and it will be able to immediately charge it and once the capacitor voltage rises of course the current then drastically drops so it won't break which is kind of the case of the uh, BJ07. Initially the first uh, versions however this diode was uh, not there so you have no diode here um, it wasn't contemplated at all and you have this capacitor but this capacitor is placed exactly here so and it's a 10,000 microfarad so this is all you have in the first version that's all there is on the main board you have battery contact weld you know the screws and you have the negative coming in then going to the FETs here and uh, that's it and, the, and then you have the this large 10,000 microfarad capacitor and so as you can see when you connect the battery uh, it will spark but you know there are no semiconductors here there is this big cap that will uh, just need to charge and it charges uh, of course there is a spark so this capacitor low ESR 10,000 microfarads as you can see when it's shorted to the weld uh, on the other side the weld contact points here all the energy of this capacitor will help the weld of course this is it will help in in a minor way it does kind of help for that initial peak but of course it won't help uh, alone you need a strong battery and that's exactly why with the capacitor here and no protection on the MCU board on the first revision the voltage of the battery would drop and the uh, FET driver would fail and these of course would fail they would be in an inconsistent state so uh, what they did is they noticed, uh, as I explained, uh, this uh, problem and they thought, well, let's insert, uh, you know, an in-series uh, diode to uh, avoid the reverse discharge. But by doing so, and so moving this back to uh, this place here, as you can see, the, um, the capacitor is not placed in aid of the battery and the weld anymore it's working as just a power uh, temporary power source for the driver circuit but it's way too big you don't need that much of a capacitor you know to to power this during that uh, short weld phase and in fact then in, and again the later Ma wise uh, maple version they reduced that to a 2200 microfarad capacitor which is on the same board and with the same diode configuration uh, so yes i hope that clears up the basic differences between these, uh, the first two, uh, you know, the versions with the five FETs and the uh, Wise Maple here, which is uh, having only four FETs and working this way with a regulator on the main board. Everything's on the main board, and the MCU, bo MCU board has just uh, the uh, control logic. Uh, so that should clarify everything. all these resistors are simply pull-up resistors they removed all these resistors on the push buttons and on the um, SPI lines here because you have internal pull-ups in the MCU so these are kind of like redundant so that's okay I understand this the major thing is this okay the MCP 1407 
So let's check the MCP1407. Here it is. It's a 6 amp MOSFET driver. Now, now this drives up to 6 amps. And you, you, you know, you're like, well, that's a lot. Uh, that's a lot, yes, in a very short amount of time, because FETs are hard to drive fast, because they need a lot of current if you want to switch them on and off quickly. Basically, a FET um, is, uh, you know, it's like uh, three little capacitors, but basically the gate is a, a capacitor. Um, it's, it works, with, you know, it's, it's written in the name, it's a field effect transistor. So it needs a field effect to work. So when they're on or off, yeah, they sit happily. They don't drain anything. They, they don't consume. There's just a very, very small leakage current. So, you know, microamps. Uh, what is a big deal is when you're turning them on and turning them off. When you're charging this gate and when you're discharging the gate. So you need a very powerful pulse. Because, as I said, and you can imagine it, uh, the larger the capacitor or the faster the transient, you know, the low to high or the high to low, the um, more amount of energy you need to move it, you know, the, the current is, is, is increasing. And that's why this uh, driver here, uh, there are two, two versions. One is inverting and the other one is non-inverting. Uh, apparently this has, as I said, I haven't seen it uh, specifically uh, but it appears to be an MCP1407. And so when the pin 19, which is this pin here, goes through this 30 ohm resistor, this is the input, and these are the two output pins, which can be seen here on the um, schematic, on the pinouts. Six, uh, six and seven are out, and pin two is in. And you see it's pin one, this is flipped around, so when you flip it around, Pin 1 and 2 are here, and so pin 2 is the input. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 are out. Okay, these are both two negatives and these are both two positives uh, because it needs a good power bus, so that's why they use two pins each. And these are connected together, and there is a via here, and you know, I guess this goes directly to pin 4, maybe going through here, or I don't know, and I haven't seen the back, but you know, this, the pinout should be of these four pins the same. So this then goes down to directly, directly to the gates. There is nothing on the um, bottom board apart from uh, some protection diodes uh, on, um, on the gates and um, the cap. This is the, the first revision, the, the first revision board. Now, this of course is, uh, costs probably more than the whole MCU. And of course for cuts, for savings and you know, cutting costs uh, and reducing all these components, they produced the versions that, you know, I spoke about, which have some issues because, as I said, if you don't d design a proper driver, uh, yes, this is very sensitive and those gates are not properly driven. So, um, I wanted to have a little talk on the uh, gate driving uh, issue, okay? So this is a package, this is a MCP gate, uh, FET gate driver, and uh, as you see, it can handle a pretty high current. It has um, dissipation here, electrostatic protection, up to 20 volts, you know, this is the maximum uh, voltage at which it works. <clears throat> and um, it's, it's the very low uh, resistance here to properly drive those, uh, let's say, impedance matching to drive the FETs, the gates, the gates of the FETs. Uh, there are some values here which are more interesting. Uh, here, high capacitive, low drive cap capability. Why? Because, um, as I said, the gates uh, are like small caps, uh, small capacitors. So 6.8 6 nanofarad and 2.5 uh, nanofarad. Um, and um, here to just show you the FETs, this is the FETs that are, uh, you know, the 4N048 or 8, uh, 300 amps. These FETs uh, are capable of uh, sustaining 300 amps, and that's a lot. And you say, oh, how, why do they break? Well, they break because if they're not properly on or off, when that current is dropped on the drain and source, uh, what happens is then uh, they're not, you know, they're dissipating so much energy into heat that they just fail because they're you know, shorting out. 
that's the reason they fail. Uh, and the, the gates, let's go down here. Uh, as you can see, it's like the zero gate voltage ring currents, 10 microamps, uh, maximum 0.1 microamps. So it's like nothing. As you can say, when they're on this is 0 0.77 milliohm, it's practically a switch. But as you can see, the input capacitance here, it is pretty much, it goes from 17 to 23 nanofarads, like 20 to 23,000 picofarads. That's a, you know, it's a relatively big uh, capacitor uh, in speed, speed wise when you're talking about, uh, you know, nanoseconds and microseconds. So you're going to need to dump a, a, a pretty much a lot, a lot of current to turn this on quickly. And that's what those drivers are for. So you get a very short peak with a high current, you turn this on and you, you know, your, your uh, FET is uh, turning on quickly. To show you what I'm talking about, here is um, <clears throat> a scope shot from my Tektronix. This uh, rise time here is taken from uh, one of the boards. I think it's the um, uh, BL18 or the Wise Maple. It doesn't matter. They're, they're actually the same. They have the same time and everything because the driver circuit is the same. As you can see, uh, when it rises, it rises until it reaches this area here. Then you get this kind of bend. You see the, um, let's say the derivative here is, is, is changing. Here you have a, a one kind of slope and then here it's changing and then it's changing again. Now this little kind of like variation has actually um, uh, a name, which is uh, uh, the Miller effect. Uh, which is um, basically when the FET is starting to turn on, when that gate is starting to saturate, uh, the capacitance is kind of pushing against, you know, that inrush of current because it's, it's, it's charging and uh, it's creating, it's increasing the current and the, the speed at which, the rate at which the voltage rises is slowing down. That makes this kind of bend, right? And then when it turns on, that uh, current decreases and you get the rise, the r normal rise time. Now here the, the, the FET is on. So if you're here or here, the FET is, you know, you just have more leakage current, but the FET is on. But this is the critical area. And from here to here, it's four microseconds. So let's say the division here is 10 microseconds so every box here is 10 every box here on the top uh, is uh, all two volts uh, so if you check this area here is four microseconds but if you check let's say the rise time from this the in this uh, in this plateau here in this let's say let's call it miller effect here it's actually half of that it's around two microseconds which is FET-wise kind of, yeah, it's it's long, longish time, uh, but we're not running a switching, um, you know, um, switching power supply at 100 kilohertz here. We're just turning it on once and that's it. So we can dissipate this amount of current. But the FET, I, to be honest, the FET is stressed in this area here. However, it's fine, okay? What I'd like to see is uh, how this curve, how this gate is turning on with the other board with the one with the MCP um, 1407 because uh, I don't have a scope shot of that I don't have it uh, I tried to buy <laughs> some versions but they all arrived and two of them are uh, they're all like BL18 and uh, and uh, they sent me two wise maples so I don't have any of them so if any of you out there have uh, one of these um, prior revisions with the driver with the MCP driver on board try to solder uh, you know, a little wire or, uh, you know, just budge on something at the uh, MCP output, okay, not the input, the output, or simply at pin 4, if that, that should be the same pin on the old revisions, and see what this uh, gate, this scope shot looks like. I, I'm curious. I believe it to be faster, but as I said, I don't have any comparison, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen it. Anyhow, this is with the transistor driver. So you have the push pole here that's doing the same thing that the driver is doing, but it's doing it with two transistors. And, you know, uh, they are current driven, they're not uh, voltage driven, and they are slower than FETs. So um, it works, but I mean, for this application where you spot weld and you just need that spot, 
it's okay but if you really really want to drive more current mm, you want a faster switching you know a faster on and, a, and an off also because this is the on time but you know there's also the off and uh, just to show you the off okay this is also an off shot as you can see uh, it's a one microsecond um, gap you know off so the off is uh, easier than the on uh, supposedly here on, on, on the scope shot but okay so I hope this uh, explains to you the difference between uh, this version um, the prior version and the later versions the driver the optocoupler here is used uh, I'm guessing but I'm pretty sure of that for the um, trigger input instead of connecting it directly to the MCU through the voltage divider it's connected to um, the a LED here the trend you know the optocoupler the transmitter and on the other side here uh, you have a resistor biasing resistor and the output goes to uh, the input here of the um, uh, ADC to detect the uh, presence of the contact and that's when it auto welds as I said uh, I, I don't have this board but I guess uh, that's what I would do I would isolate the input so if you're touching you know the lead and you have some electrostatic uh, uh, build up on your hands or something this will protect this is a two kilovolt minimum um, protection here I can show you I think I still have it there it is this is a, it's a classical optocoupler you have the input on this side pin one and two and the output on this side so pin one and two is the input and pin uh, three and four are the output and these go to the MCU and um, uh, it has uh, electrostatic discharge it's two kilovolts this is the average uh, reference uh, you know, it's, it's typical for all of these optocouplers anyhow that's what this uh, probably you know it's the input detect so this is a major difference these are just the, th the 30 ohm resistor in series is because this is a FET and to drive it directly this may have a hard time switching you know pulling it up so they insert a 30 ohm resistor um, to limit the current and kind of like match the impedance so this can have a, um, you know, a limited current um, drain on the output of this, uh, of this pin, pin 19, which is this one here. And uh, it's, it's easier, you know, let's say, to drive this uh, FET driver. Because this is a, like, uh, it's a push-pull, as I, as I showed you before. Uh, it's here, the MCP, and as you can see, it's a push-pull driver. You know, input, it's a protection here, there's a FET, and the FET drives through an inverting or non-inverting based on the model just to FETs here. One turns on, one turns off and vice versa. And these inputs, uh, the out outputs are actually connected together. <clears throat> so uh, this is the major difference. If we go back to this drawing, okay, this is a diode. So you have the positive coming here, it goes through here. And then what happens when you weld? The battery voltage drops it can drop 50 60 percent you know it's it's a lot uh, I can show you um, uh, a shot a scope shot uh, here this is with my AGM battery okay this is a small motorcycle battery um, you won't believe it but uh, this is done with my other uh, portable scope uh, as you can see when this charge is 2 4 6 8 12 even above 13 volts Look what happens. This is on the board. I did it on purpose because the battery doesn't drop so much, but those cables are not the best, so it drops even more. And it reaches just a little above 2 volts. It's about 2.5, and it starts dropping even more during the weld. Okay? When this happens, if you don't have that cap, you're going to blow your FETs. Okay? I was able to weld with my small AGM battery. Uh, I had to set about 25 to 35 milliseconds, as I said. It was welding, but um, when I, you know, put a new 3S pack 50C 5000 milliamps, that time was reduced to five milliseconds. I showed you from five to ten. I'm getting more powerful welds, <coughs> and of course, it's all about current and internal resistance. So this is just to show you how much. The battery can drop. If you're using a big 45 amp hour or more car battery, of course, it's not going to be like that. But this was with my, this is what I had uh, available to use. 
before uh, getting new um, lipo pack and you know doing other tests but this is the voltage on the mcu it starts from about over 13 you don't even see it you see it's above here and it drops and i mean the, the division is 5 milliseconds so that's 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 this is for 40 millisecond pulse doesn't change a lot but it does drop a bit so yeah okay if you do something with a battery like that and you don't have that cap mod you've killed your fets so the voltage here would drop and this is there is an output smoothing cap uh, a decoupling cap on this 3.3 volt regulator but this is only powering the display and the mcu this can even you know probably handle that little peak but this driver output needs that voltage to drive the FETs. And so this would fail and the FETs would fail. So you need to put a capacitor from the output of this diode and to ground here. This is a ground or any ground here, it doesn't matter. 470 microfarad, 25 volt or, or you know 1000 microfarad like Maker Fabio said, um, uh, he, found the, um, this problem out uh, and, and posted a video about it and uh, this is the problem here so if you add that cap you're fine you fix this board quality is fine you get probably good f uh, fast switching times and I get I'd guess the performance is better than uh, because the switching time is faster but I, I know I wouldn't you know take that with a grain of salt I'd like to see a scope shot of this output here taken from one of these pins or here directly because I'm really curious um, because, as I said, when you're w working with FETs and long traces, uh, there's inductance, impedance, and everything. You have to take a lot into consideration. Uh, of course, this is not a switching power supply, but to turn that off and on, you get some tra fast transients, and there's a lot of stuff to consider. Even the layout of the components, as I said, it, it can be a nightmare designing this, these, these uh, p switching power supplies. In this case, this is just an on and then an off. Yeah, it's just need a fast on so yeah i would honestly i would have put this circuit here on closer to the fets the closer this circuit is to the fets the better because you know you avoid that uh, track impedance and uh you you reach that that peak current is is reaching the fet gate quicker but okay i mean these are just my considerations anyhow this uh, cap on this main board I hope everybody understood now that was to help the weld okay no diode the diode is here it's you know uh, on the main board to help the weld but they forgot to put a support diode here to help this fat keep you know the voltage up and because if you have a good battery yeah, you're lucky and it works if you have even a slighter bad battery or you have a bad contact or something like that you're going to break the fets this is not going to work properly that is the problem with this this design i hope it's clear now and uh, the cap has its let's say purpose on the main board one other small note that cap is mounted horizontally with about uh, I don't know, a couple of centimeters uh, per pole of leg. Uh, eh, that's not the best. It should be mounted vertically, shorten those legs, you know, to increase the amount of current that the cap can deliver to the board. But as I said, okay, if you have a good um, battery, the cap is uh, helping and you don't, you don't, you know, you're not going to even notice. Important thing is that you have a good cap here probably a 470 microfarad uh, is enough just put a thousand microfarad to stay on the safe side but as i said you're welding maximum 30 milliseconds 20 maybe i i, I wouldn't i wouldn't i mean i don't dare go past 10 because as i said i'm you know you're starting to melt the stuff and holes inside so at least with my battery so 10 10 milliseconds that cap will keep this um uh driver happy because the peak current is only in the transition time from off to on and vice versa but you know and it's very very short if you have a 50 millisecond peak you're not gonna you know you can keep it on for how long as you want the fet is not really gonna 
drive any current from that gate. It only drives it in this area here. Um, ah, here it is. Here it is. This plateau here, you see it's around 4 volts. This area, that's actually a so-called Miller effect. Here, gate, drain and source. You see these three little capacitors? These are all in the game when you're changing state. Okay, when you're changing state, this is what is you're fighting against. Anyhow, this is uh, that, uh, that plateau that you see. Um, uh, this, because of course I haven't zoomed in enough, but you get the idea. So, once it's on, the gate is on. You know, it can stay on 20 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds. It's not going to really change. What will change is, of course, the amount of current going to the battery, uh, from the battery to the weld. And that's, uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, it's going to influence it. Um, but if, if you have a small cap across that um, this diode here, uh, that capacitor needs to transfer the energy just to turn the gate on. Once it's on, this thing is not really draining any current anymore. You know, so that's why you don't really need a very large cap. I hope that is clear because, you know, maybe people are uh, saying, oh, but then, you know, the longer the weld, it will, it will take more time. Yeah, the battery is going to discharge, but this is not going to do anything anymore. It's not going to, you know, absorb any uh, current once it's on. It just has what it's called leakage current. So a FET is on and it's happy and it's off and it's happy. But when you're turning it on quickly and off quickly, that's the only period when it's, you know, delicate and critical and it's absorbing current. That's why this thing is designed to drive six peak amps. Now the question is how much can the push-pull, this push-pull handle, you know these are two NPN transistors don't really have the specs because mine were you know they were like taken off so I, I really don't know I don't think they can handle a lot of current probably a few hundred milliamps uh, peak may maybe an amp uh, or so I, I don't know uh, so they can drive these fats but if you want to increase the speed and here is where uh, maybe I will do some tests you need to replace these 30 ohm uh, resistors with probably 10 ohm resistors uh, this will increase that peak current it will increase the rise time but it will also increase the current that is being drained by this push pull and that can be critical this is all, as I said, theoretical things which uh, need some tests and calculations, but I don't have the specs of these two. So uh, he maybe could be they could be overdriven, and uh, you know they they are like um, clipping. They're not able to deliver the current, so they will be uh, oversaturated or, or unable to drive it, and maybe the uh, rise time is actually worse. It depends. So all this is. As I said, it's getting a little bit probably technical, but this is just to analyze a little bit more the situation and, and I don't want to bore everybody. I just want to, mm, wanted to clear the confusions on these different models and explain uh, basically the, the mods, uh, but most important of all, the difference of the uh, cap, the cap positioning. So based on this reasoning, I think the designers or the engineers or whatever, when they made this, first uh, revisions um, that cap was placed there to help the weld then they found out that there was this bug uh, because the MCU uh, or the, the MCP driver was failing because of course that wasn't uh, decoupled uh, and uh, they said what is a quick fix the quick fix probably was done by somebody else uh, because the original uh, designers would have immediately fixed that. I mean, you know, just redesign it, add a cap, and you're fine. But no, they removed all the driver, they redesigned the whole um, uh, MCU board, as you can see. And what they did is they used that 10,000 microfarad cap instead to help the weld, they use it to keep the voltage up, which is an overkill. That's what I was saying in my previous videos that's what I was trying to explain that cap is way too big it's not it wasn't put there by the same people who designed the initial board I wouldn't do it it's, it's totally illogical so I think uh, the somebody else got the idea they copied you know some design and they said oh my god there is this problem let's just cut the design cost what can we do they somebody designed a very simple uh, push-pull circuit there are hundreds on the net I mean you can you can find them um, but uh, they're not as efficient as the MCP driver 
and they uh, incorrectly, let's say, use that 10,000 microfarad cap, which is uh, this one over here, as you can see uh, here, okay, not like this, but like this, and they put a diode in series. And this diode in series, error number two, they fail to put an inrush current resistor. Now, to the third board, the maple, the wise maple, okay, just to end because uh, I don't want this thing to become too long. Um, the wise maple has a smaller cap. It's a 2000, uh, 200 microfarad capacitor. It's much smaller, which is, uh, I think it's more than enough. You can put a thousand microfarad cap here uh, to supply, to decouple uh, the, um, you know, the, the logic and the uh, driver here. The, uh, this diode, uh, which is an M7 on some boards, and sometimes uh, an M7 is the equivalent of a 1N4007, basically. It's a 1 amp diode with a high, uh, over 700 volts uh, a a breakdown voltage, which is, you know, you can put an M1 here. This stuff is at 12 volts. There is no uh, reverse uh, lens or inductance uh, peak or whatever so okay to stay on the safe side they put a big one but I mean they work but as I said if you want to design something properly that's another story so they added this capacitor without a limiting resistor a current limiting resistor and what happens is that if you have a 10,000 microfarad capacitor like you know the previous boards the BL18 uh, and those ones that uh, have this um, uh, bigger, you know, the, the previous versions, uh, the the inrush current it will it will peak up, and the only limiting factor is the equivalent resistance of this poor little diode, which is I don't know, probably under one ohm or something. So you're gonna get a very high peak, and that diode, the M7, can handle 30 amps peak. It's it's in the specs, and here they are. And okay. M7 diode here, as you can see, 1000 volts. Don't need that 700 volts RMS voltage. I mean, okay, and 30 amps. If they put, for example, uh, the M1, the cheaper one, which is only handles 50 volts, or any of the others, you would have a 40 amp peak for 8.3 milliseconds. Maybe it would help, but no, no, that's a no, no. You need a resistor here with that amount of uh, capacitance to charge. Now, what about the resistor mod? Well, you see here, the MCU outputs directly there is no resistor in series on the board. There is just this 1K resistor here. And you're like, oh, but there's a 1K. Yes, but look what's missing. What's missing is that 1K pull down resistor. And this is connected to 3.3 volts, which is different respect to the initial um, circuit. Let's go and get it. It's here. Here, you have the 1K coming from the MCU board coming down, and then you have the 1K, 10K connected to the 12 volts here, but you have a 1K, you see? So what they did is they removed this 1K, connected this on the 3.3 volt, which is regulated. So you have um, a lower voltage, okay? And uh, it's easier for the MCU to drive, to drive that transistor here. Let's go back to here. So the MCU is, is driving this transistor, it's 3.3 volt, it's high. So this is 3.3 volt, it's easy, everything is high, this is on and this is off. When it drives this, you get a negative pulse. This is driving this to zero, more or less, let's say, lower than a certain voltage. There is some kind of voltage drop here because you have, it's a resistor divider. If this goes to zero, you can calculate it. Let me get the calculator out. Have a quick calculation on the fly here. Uh, how do you calculate the um, current here? You add this one, this resistor plus this resistor, it's 11K, right? That's 11,000 ohms, okay? Uh, ohm's law is uh, simple. It's voltage equals to current times res re resistance. So you have 3.3 volts here, right? Um, so if you want to calculate the current that is circulating from here to ground, so you want to calculate I. I is V over R, so you have 3.3, oops, 3.3 divided by... Okay, so you have 0.3 milliamps, okay? 0.3 milliamps, that's very low. You want to find out what voltage is here, you multiply this by the resistance. With this voltage divider present, you have 0 0.3 volts on the base. 0 0.3 is under 0 0.6, okay? It's off, it's, you know, 
but when this is up because this is not of course on ground because this MCU is up then you have of course the full voltage there's nothing pulling this down so you have 3.3 volts this is happily on when this goes low this goes to 0.3 volts and then that means that this has to turn off because under 0.6 this junction here the base junction is not conducting meaning that this position here this the voltage that is here as this is not conducting this will go up will go high meaning that this will conduct and will pull this up and will turn these FETs on okay so this is turning them on and this is turning them off when the voltage then goes back up again uh, you get this turns back on turning this back on this will drive sink this voltage down this will turn off this will turn on and this will pull the gates to low, low and turn them off so I, what's this calculation for? This calculation is to see where the um, base voltage is when this is turned off. If you leave this as it is, it will work out of the box, no headaches. If you want to try to improve it a little bit and mess around, you can change this uh, resistor here and uh, take it a step further. You can even probably try reducing these resistors, but you know that's more it's more critical because I, I haven't done any haven't run the numbers on this yet but I, I keep this as it is so I hope this was um, uh, clear enough uh, cleared up some some doubts about the two versions the cap position the driver circuits and all of that and the failures and uh, I hope that is uh, uh, clearing uh, you know doubts and not creating more because uh, I don't know sometimes uh, stuff creates more doubts than, than clears them but I was trying to be as, uh, let's say, not too technical, but just to, you know, um, just resolve those doubts and, and uh, discuss the main difference between the first version, the most sold versions, let's say, and these latter version, which is a parallel version, the Wise Maple, which is basically good as it is with those, you know, uh, little things that I, I, I spoke about. So I uh, hope I uh, didn't make this video too long um, and hope you are welding happily and nothing is blowing up. So have a good day.